Hey guys, um, don't forget that we have a brand new bonus app on Stitcher this Wednesday. And then this Friday, we have our Cut for Time clips on Patreon. You're not going to want to miss either. More Melissa, more Megan, more is more, 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 more. Indulge. It's a good time. <laughs> Tired of waking up sweaty? But same. The Buffy Breeze Comforter is temperature regulating so you can say goodnight to overheating. It's made from super soft and breathable eucalyptus fiber to keep you cool and comfy all summer long. Buffy offers a free trial, free shipping, and free returns so you can feel if the breeze is right for you in the comfort of your own bed. For $20 off your Buffy Comforter, visit Buffy.co and enter code BLAME. Want to get the inside track on the exceptional people behind your favorite series, films, documentaries, and specials? There's no better guide than Krista Smith. For years, she was Vanity Fair's ambassador to Hollywood. Now, her new Netflix podcast, Present Company with Krista Smith, brings you candid conversations with actors, creatives, and authorities across the spectrum, from Renee Zellweger to Mary J. Blige, Brene Brown, and Jason Bateman. Search for Present Company with Krista Smith where you get your podcasts. <laughs> Hello, everybody, and welcome back to another episode of Don't Blame Me. Don't blame me. Not the I'm pod. I'm just adjusting. She's just adjusting. Um, guys, it's me and Melissa today. Hello. It's so Melissa and Megan, Melissa and I. It is just, uh, no, that's the king and I. I was going <laughs> to say, it's just, you know, when you yeah. have to like, figure out if it's I or me. Oh, yeah. Melissa and me. Let's just keep it as me because we got to go with the M's. Yeah. Oh, yeah. We're we're yeah. all about branding here. M M M M M M M M M M M M M Tasty. I actually just listened to. I think it was our last one or the one before that of you and me. We're well, so funny. I mean, I don't know which one you listened to, so I, I can't either. answer your no, question. I, I couldn't even tell you which what we talked about, but like it was just like, God, we're funny. Okay. Maybe I listened to two of them. Yeah, I mean, there was two last month, so. But like you guys all, I, I love that every time it's you and I, everyone's like, oh, I love when it's just them. Yeah. It's just fuck all the rest of our guests. <laughs> we, we love the rest of our guests. We do. But. We know, but, but hey, this, it's a good time when yeah, it's just us. It's such a good time. Um, so if you guys are new here, this is an advice podcast. You guys call in and leave voicemails for us and then we give you advice. And if your life is going to shit and you need some advice, you can give us a call at 310-694-0976. And international listeners, you can send us an audio file at meganpodcast at gmail.com. Yeah, I had a brand tell me like message me on my main Instagram saying that they liked my podcast. Oh, cool! Yeah, that's awesome. Yeah, they make weed products, and I was like, "Can I? Have Can some? we send them over?" I think I think if they're. I mean, they listen, so yeah, they can listen. <laughs> um, so guys, uh, can't wait to uh, get some of that. Yeah, mm, hell it down. Mm -hmm. Well, um, do we have anything to say before well, we start? We've got our Patreon, you know. <gasps> yes, guys. Oh my God, motorcycle. I know, and those you can actually hear yeah. on the podcast. It, the audio doesn't cut it. I mean, the mics don't cut it out because so. small dick energy prevails. Yeah. Small dick energy. Yeah, guys, we launched our Patreon. I'm pretty stoked about it. We're, we've been talking about wanting to do this for a really long time. And now, now it's here. And we said for our opinionated Olivia's, if you mm -hmm. joined before August, then you'd get a shout out. Oh, my God. Yeah. So we've got a shout out to Emily Donahue. Emily Donahue. Don um, of the Hughes. Woohoo. Thank you so much. Thanks, Emily. You're our number one homie. Sorry, guys. <laughs> what? what? I mean, she's she our is. number one. She is. She's our number one. Yeah. So, you can be number two. Yeah. So um, whoever the next people are, if you sign up before the end of August, then you'll get a yeah. shout out too. Oh my God, my birthday month. Fuck, I'm going to be 26. Oh my gosh, I'm 33. I know, but like, <laughs> I, like, I, like, do you, what age do you feel on the inside? Oh, I forget my age all the time. I think I'm 30. Okay. Because I, like, I don't feel that, I don't, I, I have just feel like I've stopped aging at 22, but I don't feel 22. But every time anyone asks me my age, I'm like, I think I'm 22. And I'm not. And so the farther I get away from 22, the more ridiculous it is. Because deep down, I feel like I'm 37. But like, I don't know why I think I'm 22. Yeah. You also, don't have a 22 year old energy. No, not at all. Also, 22 was a terrible year of my life. Like, I don't want to like, maybe, maybe that's why I'm like stunted there. Maybe. More therapy. Talk about that in therapy oh next time. Oh my God. That's true. Okay. Yeah. Should we hop into it? Let's do it. Hi, Megan. Hi, Melissa. So I called in a couple weeks ago with a completely different issue, but I have a 
new one or a new blossoming one, if you will. So I've been dating my present boyfriend for a year and a half and I'm 23. He is 22. So lately, my family has been doing a lot of family events, family outings. I'm very close to my family. I'm very involved with my family. Um, and I just, I love my family. They are the most important thing in my life. And so being around my family is probably one of my favorite things. So <laughs> how my boyfriend ties into that is a little interesting. I've been noticing that more and more lately, when I've invited him to family events, uh, family gatherings, family outings, whatever it will, whatever, whatever it is, uh, he's been suddenly not having time for it or not wanting to make time for it. Or another thing he's been telling me more is that he's just, you know, tired. He wants to spend time at home, which I completely understand and I support, but my sister is home for, from college for a couple of weeks and her boyfriend is coming as well. And we have a couple different um, family gatherings and family outings. So just because this doesn't happen every day. And um, he is conveniently uh, busy those days with things that maybe I wouldn't deem necessary. And maybe that sounds harsh, but it's just the way I'm feeling. Like, you know, one day he planned to go out with his best friend, but they made this plan after I, I invited him to go with my family to an amusement park. And, like, I understand family things are not that big of a deal to him, but they are to me. And I've expressed this, and he doesn't seem to understand, and he's told me that he's just too tired to go a lot of the time which at the same time I understand, but I feel like he's potentially, I don't know, getting sick of me or my family, but won't say it. I don't know. And I almost think things and take a step back and not be so upset. It just feels kind of weird to go to a family outing where my sister and her boyfriend are there and my whole family is there, even distant relatives. And then, you know, my boyfriend couldn't make it because He's tired, didn't feel like going, or has a, you know, an unimportant outing with his best friend planned that could be rescheduled, at least in my mind. I don't know. Maybe I'm being ridiculous. I want, I want an outsider's uh, perspective of this. She got cut off because she was long. <laughs> okay. Uh, <laughs> do you want to start? Um... Because you're close with your family. I am close with my family, but I also don't like people. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, I can relate to him mm -hmm. in a, on a lot of levels. I also hate amusement parks. Yeah. So and those are and if he's tired, those <laughs> are like a all day mm -hmm. thing where you're out in the heat. There's a ton of people around mm -hmm. um, like waiting in lines. is just long being like it's just it's just exhausting yeah. so if he's tired already like i can understand if he can go hang out with his friend you know yeah. like doing something low-key and doesn't want to hang out with your family yeah i also think like i for this i again i also really relate to your boyfriend on this one um i think like it's awesome that you're so super close to your family but they're your family mm -hmm. they're not his family and you didn't bring up how much you guys hang out with his family or anything like that. And that also doesn't really, I don't think that really matters because everybody's relationship with their parents is different. So like he just might not like, they might not have like as much of a, either they don't live as close or they don't have as much of a, Oh, we spend all this time together or they do. And he doesn't necessarily, uh, and he likes to have you around, but he doesn't value the, that quality time and spending as much as you do with them. Um, which is totally fine. I definitely <laughs> am like more on that side. Um, and I think like comparing it, it to how your sister and her boyfriend and all of those things like that, I think that's not really fair because it's their choices. Mm -hmm. And I think if this is a deal breaker for you, which it sounds like a deal breaker and you want somebody who's going to join your family, then this might not be the guy for you. And I don't think there's anything wrong with either side of it, but also that whole thing of like, when you date someone, you date their family. Like I, to be perfectly honest, I'm not, 
I, I get massive social anxiety usually when it comes to like uh, having to be on about like all the time. Yeah. And that's what happens when you're in that situation. And for you, it's easy because it's your parents, it's your siblings. And you can tell your, like you can tell him that all the time, like, oh, you don't have to put, like, you're totally fine. Like you don't have to stress about it. But no matter what, like it's not his family. Like, mm-hmm. and no matter how close he feels to them, he's still having to put, like be that boyfriend and really just like put it on. And that's exhausting and it's not really super fun. And just the amount that you talk about hanging out with your boyfriend, um, with Matt, you talk about like hanging out with your family. Mats and I have this whole thing. Um, and we've said this from the beginning of our relationship of there's certain things that like we're going to invite each other to and we'll have the invite. It can be up there. You can say yes, you can say no, but there's only a few things that we will really insist that is this is a really important thing for you to be at. Mm-hmm. And even that that's the, those are the things that, okay, we reschedule something for. This is the thing that, okay, it might not be like either one of our absolute favorite things to do. And it might not even be either of our favorite things to do, but it's an obligation. And we will reserve those super important things, but not everything is that important. And yeah. I've had friends who've dated people who every event has been that a really important one. So for you having to be like, well, he could reschedule all of this. It's like, well, it sounds like he's hung out with your fucking family a ton. Yeah. And like your sister's home for college from college. That's your sister. You spend time with her. And I don't think that you, if anyone in your family makes you feel weird for the fact that like your boyfriend's not around as much as like anyone else's, like he's got his own, he's got his own life. Mm-hmm. And I don't want to say your relationship is doomed at all, but I think you do need to figure out if this is a deal breaker for you or not. Because I recently had a friend, um, her and her boyfriend broke up and a huge aspect of it was the fact that like, she was really close with her family. He was really close with his family, but he wanted her to join his family. And she was like, I still have like my own stuff. And I think everyone's great and all of that. But like at the end of the day, like if that's the kind of relationship that you need, then that's not going to work out. Um, so yeah, I would just, I would just come at it from um, a way of thinking like as much as you really enjoy all of this, is it, do you really, is it a deal breaker? Like, do you need anyone? Do you need to have a partner who's like always around and with you with your family, which I, that is so like romantic comedy to me, which like I love, like, I love that. I think that's great. I'm not that kind of person. And I also wouldn't be, I don't know. I wouldn't, I wouldn't date somebody where that was also the case. Mm-hmm. Do you know what I mean? So yeah. I think like you're totally valid in like, if this is how you feel, this is how you feel. But I would also take a step back from the situation and maybe, maybe this time, like you don't push it and you let him do his own thing. And then realize yeah. like, okay, you can still have fun if he's not there. Yeah. Like you can still have a great relationship and have him not be around all of the time. And also maybe it's just, he doesn't come around for every single little thing. And then you deem what's important. But I think right now too, if you, if he's been around your family so much and been doing all of these things, um, he's, you're right. He's not going to tell you if he's sick of them. Like you should just ask him. Oh my God. But he can't say that. No, you can just be like, Hey, I noticed that you don't come around my family as much as you used to. Um, is this too overwhelming for you? right? Yeah. And, and be like, what's let's come up with a good way of knowing, because maybe right now he's tapped out for a couple months and like, he's not going to see them. So you don't make, you don't decide, okay, let's decide what's important. FYI, the thing right now is really important. Yeah. And just let him know, you know, like, like I, if you don't want to come, that's okay. It, mm-hmm. it, it's not completely okay with me. Um, but I, I just want you to know, like, I respect your decision, yeah. but I feel odd, awkward being there with like my family, my sister, and she has her boyfriend there. And then other family has their significant others mm-hmm. there. And I'm the one without my significant yeah. other. Yeah. I think you just, you guys need to, you need to decide what are the important things mm-hmm. And then he can make time for that. But it's a lot to ask someone to make time for everything. And I also, if if he might not be super close to this family, they might not live close by. Like my friends are my family to me. So Mm -hmm. like for me, if I had plans with my best friend and then like was rescheduling for something like for me, that is, that is, that does carry the same level of importance as some people is with their family. Um, So I, yeah, I would just, I I think he also just doesn't want to hurt your feelings Mm -hmm. and that's why he's, coming up with all yeah. th- this but other your, stuff but her feelings are yeah. being hurt so if you don't say something then it's just going to get worse <laughs> um but as somebody who i don't have i'm not i don't have that close relationship there's also if he also doesn't have a close relationship it's 
I've definitely been in situations with um, like Mats's family and stuff where like I have to tell him like we have to take a break. Like not that this is anything necessarily personal against anyone, but it's like as somebody who doesn't have a great relationship with parents, like it can be hard to like mm-hmm. spend a lot of time around. Like you see like a really happy family. And for you, you might think of like if he doesn't have a happy home life, like, oh, I'm so glad I can bring him into mine. It's still not his. Yeah. And I've had people say that before, like who like when they invite me to do family stuff, it's like, well, you're a part of our family. And I'm like, that's really, really nice and really sweet but like I'm not and the sentimental value and stuff that you hold I know it's like coming from the greatest place ever that you want to extend that to me but I don't have those nostalgic feelings towards Mm -hmm. this and it can just be like a little triggering and like not necessarily a way that he finds that that makes him feel super happy um so I would just I would yeah focus on that and then also at the like last thing I'll say about this but but how much of really really wanting him to be there um do you value versus when you look at him, is he having a good time when he's there? Yeah. So you're like your ideal situation with partners. Like you should want them to be enjoying it as much as you. So f- having him come, if having him come is the win, I think you should also focus on like, Oh, do I just want him to be here for like saving face because everyone else is here? Or like, is he having a good time? And I, am I also having a good time because he's here and he, I can see that he's enjoying himself. Mm-hmm. And maybe if he comes around less and like he's more fun to be around and you enjoy his presence there more. I think that's I think it's a great thing. Yeah. And what's you guys what's your relationship like as a whole? Yeah. Like, is this just the one thing that is like bothering you or are there other things going on as well? Yeah. 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 Well, best of luck. Give us an update. We'd love to know. Yeah. And uh, have fun at the amusement park. That sounds fucking exhausting. As somebody who relates to your brother on the tired level. Boyfriend, not brother. What? Did I say brother? (laughs) Oh, yeah. Don't fuck your brother. (laughs) I relate. I'm tired. (laughs) We're the same. Okay. On to the next. Hi, I'm 24. And I am calling because I need advice about this guy. I met him on Bumble like two years ago. And he ended up just visiting. And he lives five hours away. So we have been talking casually, got to know each other, have become pretty close friends and recently he ended up moving back so we have been hanging out casually dating with intentions of maybe becoming more serious this summer once we're not so busy I've really enjoyed hanging out with him but like the sex aspect of things is really weird like I just found out he's 28 that he hasn't so much as made out with anyone for six years which you know at first I thought it was weird but to each their own and then we started messing around and he has a really hard time getting hard and then once he is hard he has a hard time keeping it up which you know it happens sometimes I get nervous but after the first few times I kind of tried bringing him up and he was super awkward about it. So I dropped it. And then there was this one point where he went to get a condom and he came back and I went down on him and he had put numbing gel on himself and my mouth went numb and I started drooling everywhere. And I tried to bring it up again. He caught kind of like angry with me for bringing it up. And he, it wouldn't be that big of a deal, but when he goes down on me, he's perpetually like a half of an inch to the right. And I've tried being sexy about it and saying, oh no, like move your head just right here. And to the point where I was like, right here, this is the spot. And he still can't get it right. So I really enjoy spending time with him, but I don't want to go into something knowing that this is going to be an issue. So I guess it's wondering what your advice on this would be. Should I talk to him about it, even though he's like been upset about it every time we wrap it up? Or would this be a good enough reason to not try getting more serious? I don't know. Thanks. I just, okay, I need us all to visualize. I'm so sorry this is happening too, but I just really need us all to visualize a moment that she went down on him. She comes back up. She's, drooling everywhere because her mouth is numb that is like this is a comedy we have to save this for in a comedy oh, have you ever yeah. made out with someone who's just on coke and not knowing no 
Um, is it Coke that does it or one of them? But it makes your mouth go numb and all fuzzy and numb. And like the idea that like I can only imagine that that would be so much worse. Also, like, did it taste funny? Like, did it taste like icy hot? Like, what's the numbing? Or is that a thing? No, there's like numbing gel for your penis. But is it numbing or is it like icy hot? Because like no, numbing seems like you know, like the in, if you get the ones that are like extends condoms that are for guys. Yeah, that stuff that's on that that coats that. But isn't that so you don't come too fast? That's what he's trying to do. Wait, is he coming too fast or is he not coming at all? He's not staying hard. So he's trying to like, oh. so the sensation. Oh, okay. In longer. my mind, I'm like, well, I feel like you're not going to stay hard if you yeah. can't feel your dick. No, but that's what he's trying to not feel so he can stay hard, harder. Oh. Hard longer. <sighs> wow. Okay. You need to be done with him. I don't, maybe he he's like, I guess he's trying, but maybe there's other things like an underlying thing that he needs to get checked out. If he hadn't made out for anybody in six years, it was it because he was nervous about because he can't stay mm -hmm. hard and he has this issue, this ED issue where he has he been checked out to see what's wrong with him. OK, but my mind's not even at the penis stuff. It's at the fact that he cannot get, eat her out. And you know, she's giving him explicit you know, advice in the words of a former caller. <laughs> You just got to grab him by the head. <laughs> but he's, she did. He's down there. She, no, she told him. She, she well, should physically he's there. move him. She said she showed him right there and he still can't do it. I just think, here's the thing. Like, I think like in the, like if, if this was all on paper, on the scheme, in the scheme of things, like a guy who um, struggles to stay hard uh, and the sex isn't all there, but you really like him. I would say like, I don't think that that's like a doomed situation, but I think you saying like, is this enough of a reason to end it? Like the, even in your voice, I think for you it is. And I think that's fine. Like I'm, I will fully admit like <laughs> I'm not somebody and this sounds whatever it sounds bitchy or whatever. But like, if I hook up with somebody for the first time and like, it sucks, I'm not really one of those people who like is going to work at it. Like, I don't want, I like, I want our sex to be better, but like, if it sucks, I have a really hard time immediate, unless it's like, okay, think about the difference between being awkward and clunky. Okay. I don't know. I'm fucking looking at you. Cause you've only ever had good sex and great sex. Okay. Whatever. So, but <laughs> anyone in general, like if I've ever had, like, if it's bad, I have a hard time staying super attracted to that person. Unless the reasons why it's bad, it is coming from a place that it's like, oh, this is just like a little clunky and awkward and it's going to get better. But if it feels like not compatible and it's not working and this is clearly like you've said, this has been multiple times and it's been multiple times. Like, again, I'm not even thinking about the the erectile dysfunction part. Like I'm purely thinking about the fact that like you've literally told him how to go down on you and like he he can't. And it also seems like him getting like angry and like defensive about like sex in gen like in that in general like doesn't seem like somebody who is also trying to work at it you know what i mean mm -hmm. and also like putting that on without even telling you or anything like that like that's just not good communication yeah like he, what if you were really allergic to it true you know like that is true. that's just in like the fact that like you're cool with like oh i'm gonna put this shit on my dick like and i the, he didn't know that it would make your mouth numb yeah too. like that's just a little like it's just a little odd and like the not having made out with anyone in, like a bunch of years like I don't think that's necessarily like, I don't think it's necessarily like says anything other than like, yeah, it's a little odd. And the oddness of that is kind of checking out in the rest of things that are happening now. You know what I mean? Like, it's like, oh, that was weird. Like, that's weird. But maybe there's something, maybe there's, I don't know. Like I didn't hook up with someone for like almost a year because I wanted to take a break. But yeah. like once you know what I mean? Like, it, it's just kind of like, it's a weird thing. And then everything else is falling through. You're like, yeah, that kind of matches that fucking weird thing. But I think you can like really get along with him and think he's great. But you're even saying like you don't you're not sure if you should get into something with someone with this right off the bat. That's not super sexually compatible. And if you feel like you've given it, you guys have both kind of really tried and given it that effort. Um, then, yeah, I, I, I think you're right in the sense that like I think you're actually also in a good position that like it is pretty casual now. She's not in a good position. No, she's not. She can't eat she, her properly. Yeah. Like how many I also want to know how many times. Because I don't know, I genuinely do not know how many times I could do, like, just be like, without it happen. like, I would get, oh, wow. Yeah, I would say if you really like him and you think that you want to be with him, then you should encourage him to see his doctor. But if... And draw him a diagram. Yeah. Just take, pinch his tongue yeah. and just move it. Yeah, literally <laughs> just like grab his head, 
and be like, there, now don't fucking move. And then just clamp your legs around his head. <laughs> but also, but like, if you don't like him, then move on. Yeah. And I'm curious uh, what you're like, are you super turned on by him? Like, are you super yeah. sexually attracted to him? Like, is it the fact that like, it's all this buildup and then the follow through is kind of like sucky or is it like, is none of that really meshing? Mm-hmm. Like, you know what I mean? And that's why I think you can tell if you're sexually compatible or not. And then also if he's not willing to fucking work at it, then it doesn't matter if you are, he's not gonna. Yeah. Oh, my God. I just can't even imagine. Also, this sounds, I'm so fucking curious about this icy, like this, I keep calling it it's icy not, hot. I, icy hot. But isn't that what it's going to feel like? Tingly? That's what icy hot feels like. No, that's not what I see. It it's like might, Vicks Vapor Rubby. It won't. It's not tingly. It just numbs you. Yeah, but I want to know what it feels like to my mouth. Oh. I'm going to buy it. Mom's going to be like, probably, no. It probably would be tingly. And I think it would smell like something chemical yeah but it has to be like like what does that feel like on your vagina or is it inside the condom it would be inside the condom because he went to go get the condom on okay so but he went to get a condom so he came back she went down on him she probably he probably thought he was being sneaky you know like i'm going to get a condom but he put yeah. the numbing cream on so then did he come or did he take the go- condom off and then she went down i don't think him? he he i think he went to get the condom but he hadn't put it on yet oh so then he just smeared some stuff yeah okay i really want to know what that's like i'm just really curious like what's well, that you can try it Mots won't or let you can me. just get like i'm uh, gonna have to put it on my arm and then make out with my arm or you just get like um what's that stuff? Okay? like ambisol what yeah what's that it's like stuff like when people have like canker sores or stuff in their mouth they put that in oh maybe it's like that throat spray i have um yeah okay Oh, no, I'm less interested because I have strep throat, so I know what that nothing stuff feels like. <laughs> but that's so but funny. But it's so much that you're drooling, yeah. though. It's got to be strong. Can you imagine? Also, sloppy wet blowjob. Think- like, if you're just drooling everywhere. And you're just, like, like- moving your head. Because you can't move your mouth, so oh you're just God. moving your head. <laughs> <laughs> Her mouth isn't even touching Her his dick. Is that- is it- <laughs> There's so much teeth, but neither <laughs> of them can, can feel, feel it because everything is numb. <laughs> oh, my God. This is so fucking weird. Yeah, you can't date this guy. That's so weird. Weird. It's just so fucking weird. And you also have to ask. He's not like, oh, by the way, you're drooling all over me and you can't feel your mouth because of this. Yeah, but he can't feel it either. That's so weird. That's so weird. That's super fun. It's like, yeah, no. I'm just not here for people like doing shit and sex that like we haven't agreed upon, you know? Yeah. I just keep thinking about um when I had my wisdom teeth taken out and my sister was like, she's like, you can you kept saying, I can't feel my tongue. I can't feel my tongue. <laughs> what i think about shout out to my sister because she like, now listens to the show oh yeah yeah that's so <laughs> like religiously now funny. wow okay well let us know what happens give us an update um yeah yeah i just yeah i just fizzle it's, out fizzle out your friends yeah just stop having sex until he figures things out if you like him i'm changing yeah, we have different we have yeah, different opinions. I, I just I'm not I'm not here for the learning curve. <laughs> I'm not. I, I'm here for like let me like make this better. But also like if I give you a tip, which is fine, because like the, the first time you have sex with someone, like it's not actually like me mind blowing, but like if you're giving him like verbal and physical, like here's how to do this, and he's just like, I'm gonna fucking ignore you. Like I know your pussy better than you. Like, oh my god. Also, when she says he's like two inches. That's that's like that's your, your thigh. thigh. That's, that's your thigh. What, that's what I'm saying. <laughs> like he's just like sucking on a fucking lip, like being like, Ugh. like that's just so. And like him to be like, no, she says that it's here, but I'm gonna avoid. Like was clearly, clearly the part that I'm supposed to be getting at. Like that to me, I'm like, you just like it's not even like he's an idiot to me. That just sounds like he's a fucking asshole who's like, no, I'm not gonna do it. Like you're gonna, it's like a guy who's like, no, I'm not gonna go down on you. I'm just gonna make you come purely by touching your nipples and being like, okay, this is fun and all, but like. <laughs> Can we like can we move this along? And also, you're clearly trying. You know what I mean? Like she's yeah. And also, she's if he's work. quick, if he's like quick to come or like not staying hard, like that's like, he should be a guy who like then takes it upon himself. Not to say that that's like a negative thing or whatever, but like would take it upon himself. Like that embarrassment or whatever. I would usually think that that's going to get targeted into being like, okay, I really want to pleasure her mm-hmm. versus like, oh, I'm going to get angry. But he hasn't been with anybody in six years, like since he was 22, because he's 28. Yeah, but like your vagina has always been in the, like most women's vagina. It's in the same spot. Like it's not like, oh, it used to be on the thigh. Do you know what I mean? I know, but I'm just saying. Yeah. But you guys put on porn new. while you have sex. But it would have to be like lesbian porn for yeah. Maybe you just put to on, give like proper... 
directions. I just would laugh. Like if someone was just like eating out my thigh, I'd be like, <laughs> like, can you just imagine? And you're like, oh no, it's a little to like this side and he's just not moving. And you're like, are you avoiding it? Like, is that what you just like? Hmm, I don't. Maybe he's gay. Yeah, maybe he's gay. Who fucking knows? But I don't think it's, yeah. Well, I guess Melissa said that we really like and keep trying, but I'll be here to say I told <laughs> like, you so when it never hold fucking his gets hand better. To the doctor. But I don't think, I don't think she really likes him because they've known each either. other for two years. Yeah. And also, you literally said it in a way of being like, is this enough to like break up with him? Yeah, like, and, I saw your face. In yeah. My mind. And she's like, we're like dating to see if it gets more serious in yeah. the summer. No. That's the summer is not the time work. to get more serious no. either. Cuffing season's in the winter. Yeah. Yeah. That's when you want to eat your heavy <laughs> starchy foods. for the fling. Yeah. It's for the flings. It's for mm-hmm. the lifeguards, pool mm-hmm. boys, all that shit. Mm. <laughs> Have a good time. On to the next. Hi. Um, hey, Megan. So I, I have a little, uh, I have a, not a problem. It's just a, um, I don't know how to explain it. Um, so... I hooked up with this guy. I'm a gay male, by the way. I hooked up with this guy. He's like 28. I'm 18. There's 10 year difference, but you know, he was Latin. I, I have an affinity. I can't. I can't help that. And I get. I get to his house. You know, I have my knife and I have my gun in my glove box. So I'm like safe. Um, and I walk in the house, and um, his husband is there that I didn't know about. And they want me to live with them and be like their gay kids that they um, do things with. And um, how do I say no? But they also want to be my sugar daddies. How do I say yes to that but no to living with them? Thank you. Fuck. Oh, if I could have like that Christy Teigen gif where she's just like, oh, my God. Yeah. Yeah. Fucking shit. Wow. 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 I mean, can is there room for negotiation? That's if. Yeah. Do you know what I, I mean, would th- I would think if you brought everything to the table, yeah. like, hey, I'm willing to um, be pampered too, but I don't want to live here. Yeah. Like, do you want to hook up with both? Like, are you, are you into that? Like, or also maybe the one that you want to hook up with is he like, does he have enough like say in the relationship that it's like, this is my sugar, but like, can you be a solo sugar baby to one of them? I don't think so. No, it needs to be like a twofer. I think it's a twofer. Well, I mean, I think if you're open to negotiations, <laughs> yeah, they're like, you're like literally their sugar child. It's like, a I, couple. Well, I also can't with the fact that they refer to the term kid. Cause I'm like, no, no, no there's sex stuff happening here. Like, like you can be like, they're like mm. sugar. I guess baby it's is baby. always a weird the, is, it, Yeah, it that's is a the term. Familial term, anyway. Yeah, but yeah. it's just different now because there's two. two of them. So it sounds sh- like their own sh- child. Daddies. Yeah. Hey, more is more. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, I think if you're like, if the whole situation as a whole is just like really like not, you're not into at all. And the only thing that's enticing is like the sugar baby aspect. Um, I mean, sure. See if you can yeah. like become a sugar baby with no strings attached. But also, like, if you're open to, um, like if there's things you're open to and the thing that's like really like the no go is living together. And then also like you probably have your like hard passes on like any sexual things. Um, see if there's room for negotiation. Mm-hmm. I Bring think, an offer to the table. Yeah. Wear a yeah. suit. Yes. With no pants. I love this. And have a full blown contract written up mm-hmm. and be like, let's see how this is going to yeah. be a thing. Maybe I think, bring your lawyer into it. <laughs> yeah. Cause I think you're right in the sense that like, I don't think, living i think that's like a little it to me seems like a little like it seems like they're gonna like dress him up and yeah it seems a little barbie dollish yeah. and like in a way that i don't think is um I, I personally if i was i don't think that's awesome like great and also you don't sound like that's like mm-hmm. your cup of tea either um so i think like if there's a way that they're like you can feel you can you get what you want out of this and you still feel like empowered and you don't feel kind of like pigeon held um I say like go for like finding that sort of negotiation um, and like as w- in regards, but also if you just want to say no as a total ho- whole, I think that's also like very valid and fair just to be like, 
Hey guys, you know what? Thank I'm super flattered by your offer. Thank you so much. Um, not really what I'm looking for right now. Um, but, uh, very flattered. So, um, yeah, thank you. Carry on, mm-hmm. you know, or you can, or just be like, you know what? I'm not, uh, like, I'm again, like, I'm really flattered by all this, but like, I am not super comfortable. Like I like my living situation. I'm not really comfortable or, um, looking for a new one. Yeah. Um, unless you guys want to buy me something. <laughs> yeah. Unless you want me to go to my own apartment. Like, I really like my own space yeah. individually, but like, you know, I would be open to discussing like other aspects, um, of this that I could get into. I just like want to make sure that like, we're all on the same page. Mm-hmm. Um, then I think, yeah. Yeah. Negotiations. You never get a contract first and just sign it. Yeah. And I think if you guys are going to like get into anything, I think it probably is good to, even if it's not like legal binding agreements yeah. in that sense, but like any type of relationship, you should have open communication. Yeah. Especially when it's you joining in to someone else's relationship, yeah. having that, um, making sure that you guys are all on the same page with like what we're all okay with and comfortable with. And also making sure that you establish what you're comfortable with before you talk to them. Mm -hmm. So you don't feel pressured in any sense um, to kind of change your comfort levels. And if you do, then like readdress that with them, but don't, don't go into it. Um, Like totally on their terms. Yeah. Good luck. Good luck. Please call us back. Yeah. I've had friends who've done the sugar baby thing. Have you? Yeah. We had a couple callers at one point that had shared their stories. I mean, you know, some people got to fucking pay for college Mm -hmm. and also like, live life right yeah it's more a lot more common than i do want the call back from the one girl that was like falling in love with her sugar daddy oh yeah from like season one or two <gasps> they're married they had their own sugar yeah i think she's in australia Ooh, yeah let us know yeah also you let us know too i'd love mm-hmm. to know um what happens yeah maybe you guys can meet on like the chat board and have a discussion yes. <gasps> we should have like a sugar baby like um like subgroup yeah can I join? I just want to, I just want to, I just like. You're an admin so you can true. see it. <laughs> <laughs> Megan is always watching. <laughs> Big brother always watching. Wow. Love it. Okay. on Is it time for a break? Time for a break. Okay, guys. Uh, we'll take a quick break and we'll see you guys soon. Or you'll hear us soon. We'll be back. Yeah. With more than 70 sizes, including their signature half cup sizes, Third Love designs bras with breast size and shape in mind for a perfect fit and premium feel. Just answer a few simple questions via Third Love's Fit Finder quiz to find your perfect fit in 60 seconds. Then, thanks to Third Love's 100% fit guarantee, you can wear, wash, and put your bra to the test for 60 days. And if you don't love it, you can return it and Third Love will wash and donate it to a woman in need. This is hands down the most comfortable bra you'll own with straps that won't slip, tagless labels, and lightweight, super thin memory foam cups. We've talked about this before. This is my fucking favorite bra. I'm obsessed with it. Tell me about it. It's, first of all, I have this like light pink one that's really cute. They have so many, okay, we've got the standard like black, also whatever we want to call nude, which just means beige. Let's not call that nude. Nude is different for every skin tone, but like They've got cute neutrals. They've had like mustardy colored ones. And this pink one that I have, it's not like beige. It's like cute and it's not white, but I can wear it with like white. And I can also wear it with like light colored shirts, but it feels a little bit cuter. And I think it's adorable. Also, I never really understood about straps that don't slip until I had a bra that I was forced to wear on a set of something. And boy, oh boy, is it the most annoying thing in the world when they just fall off? It's like, you have one job to stay on my shoulder, stay there. And I noticed that is when, when they talk about they don't slip, they're like ribbed for her pleasure and staying on her tits. And I love them. So cute, super soft, super comfortable. I don't even remember that I have it on. I could take a nap with this bra on, which is a big deal because I can't even take a nap anyway. Yeah. But like I could nap with this bra. It's so comfortable. You need to get one. I, I need to get another one. I want a different, I want a different style. I want, I have undies too. I love their undies. They match the bra. Third Love knows that there's a perfect bra for everyone. So right now they're offering my listeners 15% off your first order. Guys, get it. That's a great deal. Go to thirdlove.com slash blame now to find your perfect fitting bra and get 15% off your first purchase. That's thirdlove.com slash blame for 15% off today. 
<laughs> when it comes to vibrators, there's no one size fits all. We all have different bodies. That's why Skin Condoms has a new line of intimate devices. These vibrators are amazing. There's the Thrill, which is a more discreet bullet equipped with three different speeds, and the Shiver, which is a waterproof massager with seven different speeds. The Shiver also has a ribbed texture for multiple sensations. Ladies, you need to try these, and if you're a dude, go buy one for your lady. It's for enhancement, not replacement. Every bedroom should have at least one sex toy. So save intimacy and feel everything with skin. You can order skin devices right from Amazon. Just search skin, that's S-K-Y-N, to explore their entire line of intimate products. And if you shop on July 15th, you'll get a special discount exclusively for Prime Day. Buzz buzz. Did you know that fashion is one of the top polluting industries in the world? I actually did. I've been doing a lot of research about this. Amour Ver, which is French for green love, is a sustainable clothing brand that thoughtfully designs their pieces using sustainable fibers, non-toxic dyes, and local production so you always feel good about what you're wearing. Their clothes are made in limited quantities to eliminate excess waste and ensure the highest production standards. And they've worked directly with mills to develop signature fabrics that are soft, beautiful, and durable, and of course, sustainable. With impossibly soft tees, comfortable dresses, chic jumpsuits, Shoes and accessories, Amour Ver has classic and flattering pieces for work and play. I just got a, um, I ordered a jumpsuit. I love a good jumpsuit. I love anything that I can wear in one piece and not have to think about anything else. Um, but I was so excited because I have had friends who shopped here a bunch. And my friend Sydney, Aislinn, loves it. So I was so excited to uh, try it out. And I'm working on uh, not consuming fast fashion and drastically reducing my fast fashion uh participation so i love this and uh it's a great store really really cute stuff so right now amor ver is offering our listeners 15 percent off your first order when you go to shopgreenlove.com slash blame that's shopgreenlove.com slash blame for 15 percent off your first order go to shopgreenlove.com slash blame <laughs> we are back from our break and uh let's hop into the rest of the calls Hi, um, I'm 22. Um, I live, it doesn't matter where I live. Uh, so I just broke up with my boyfriend um, of two years because of a plethora of things, um, but I kind of had like a straw break, I guess, um, when he showed up to my brother's fifth birthday on Muscle Relax. There's no guarantee there was an accident. He didn't know how they would affect him, but you know, whatever accident, air quote or not, uh, it just, I'm a protective person and I don't allow that around my family. Um, I also have been having a lot of business with my own, you know, self-love and stuff. And we have to live together for at least the next month while I find a place because I'm moving closer to my family, um, and to a city that's a little bit more accessible. Um, and I guess I was just looking for tips on boundaries because he's insisting that we sleep in the same bed and, you know, make the most of the time we have left. And I didn't break up with him because I didn't love him. Um, it was just, you know, what was best for me and what was best for the people who I love outside of him. And, like, he's just insisting we make the most of the time we have left. And I don't know if that's the best way to handle it, I guess. Like, I don't mind it, but, like, it's not like we're cuddling or anything in bed. Like, we're just, like, I'm sitting on the edge of the bed while we're watching shows or some shit. And it's definitely not the same. And I just want to help with setting boundaries because it's really difficult um, with addiction. And whenever you still love someone, but you just, you know, you need to leave because it's what's best for you. Um, and also tips on helping to make my new apartment a sanctuary because that's all I want it to be. I just want it to be cozy and fluffy and fucking beautiful for me to grow and take time for myself. Okay. Um, that's it. Thank you. I uh, didn't give as much detail as I probably should have. Um, basically we just have a long history with addiction and I have a long history with trauma and other bullshit that he's supported me through with like therapy. Oh my god, I'm about to hit the three, so I'm gonna go. Thank you. Have a good day. You guys fucking rock. Bye. I don't know why he's calling the shots. And I get that, like, you really care about him and you love him. And, like, I've definitely been in a relation. Actually, it's a lie. I get why he's calling the shots because you also don't disagree with him. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like, you, 
if she hasn't put the boundaries up. Yeah, because you don't necessarily want to because you're right. You do still love him. It is like, this is what's best for you and your mental health. Um, I think the most important thing when you are... I don't like I don't want to say that you can't trust yourself because like deep down you can but like the minute to minute day by day you're having to deal with like okay I know what's right for me versus like this also feels really good so it's really fucking confusing because mm-hmm. like you're also even saying like he supported you through all of this stuff and like it is the addiction that is the issue and like it's a very valid and fair and like empowering self-love reason to be out of the relationship but I think now you need to involve somebody else to hold you accountable for that, like very clear, correct um, thought process that you've had, but it's hard to maintain that, especially when you see him all the time. So I think it like, as much as like, I don't want to, as much as it's like, Oh, like winning the relation, like the winning the breakup or whatever, like staying your ground and all of that stuff. I don't think um, it comes in the form of being like, if you like talk to your friends about it and they're like, well, no, like he should be the one sleeping on the couch. Well, if he's not, then you should sleep on the couch. Mm-hmm. If he's not going to do that and he's going to insist that like, no, I really want to sleep in the bed with you. If he's not going to respect your boundaries, um, should he be the one sleeping on the couch? Yeah. But like, it might have to be you or even more than that. You have, to, you're spending a month, you have a month left. Stay with a friend, like yeah. have a friend come crash at your place too. like make it so like, you are not alone together because like you shouldn't be watching TV together. Like this isn't how a normal breakup would go. And it's also going to make it really hard and confusing and also an even harder transition for you, I think, to then go to being completely by yourself Mm -hmm. in your new apartment. Um, I think even like you said, like how can I make my apartment feel like a sanctuary? I think like you need to start that process now yeah, because it's like you guys haven't broken up yet. Like, you've taken away like uh, the and for the intimate aspects and like you've dialed it back, but like it's still ru- even being roommates is still like a really like heavily intertwined relationship. And so you guys are still there. Um, so I think even if it inconveniences you for a month staying with a friend um, or uh, staying with like a family member or anything like that, or mm-hmm. anything to get you in a place where like you aren't spending any alone time with him. Um, and I also think it'd be really good for you uh, to spend some time away from that apartment too. Yeah. Because you're going to be in a totally new space. And I think that's going to be a great thing for you because it's not going to be like the memories of this place that you guys had together. But I think that the more you're in an, you're in a place now where you can gradually pull back from all of that and it's not going to be so much cold turkey. So I think like really trying and making an effort to do that and even just not hanging out at the house, like having it be like if you have to sleep there and you can't stay at a friend's place one night or you can't stay at like a any a family member's place one night or a friend can't stay with you that one night, then come home just to sleep and you sleep mm-hmm. on the couch. You don't hang out there and you don't watch movies there. You don't watch TV there. Like you don't, you don't do that there. You really use it as like, this is my crash pad. And, and he's your roommate. Yeah. And also just, and tell him and be like, I really love you and I really care about you. And I, the reason why I'm doing this is because I care about me too. And I need to value me. And I, as my, I don't want you to take this in like a, I don't value our relationship and what it's meant to me, but I need to value myself right now. And I would really, I'm going to let you know, I'm not going to talk to you. Like mm-hmm. if you talk to me, I'm not going to respond. And I think just telling him that and being like able to create that, but distance now I think is going to be a lot it's going to just benefit you in the long run. And also as much as you're saying that like he's saying this and he's saying this and he's saying this, you just have to create your own boundaries and it doesn't matter if he agrees to them or not, because you don't need him to agree to them when you've created them. Mm -hmm. Like you, you get to live up to that. Like if you're like, no, I'm not going to sleep in the same bed as you. He can't, I mean, if he's physically forcing you to then like get out of there. Yeah. But the same thing of like, you're like, if I'm not going to talk to you, he can't force you to talk to him. And again, if he puts you in a situation where he's like physically harming you, then that's a whole other story, but he's not going to necessarily agree with the boundaries that you want to create, but that doesn't mean that you shouldn't still have those. Yeah. They're your boundaries. They're not, um, something that you should get okayed by him. Yeah. Um, so just think about what you want. What is it? And it'll be easier now for you to set them than, um, doing it in the long run. So, Yeah. yeah, but I think, yeah, just friends, Friends are really, yeah. and also I don't, I don't want you, I don't, I'm not saying, I don't want to put words in your mouth because I don't think you should feel this way. Um, But if you do feel any sort of like embarrassment about all of this stuff, I think it happens 
I mean, addiction happens to like, so I've said so many times, like I've dated so many guys who've been into drugs and like, you can kind of feel like an idiot that you're like, how the fuck did I not know this? Or like, how the fuck did I get in this deep? And I feel dumb. Or even if your friends had made an inkling and like suggested it before and you were like, no, no, no way. You shut it down. The more open and honest you can be with everybody in your life, then they're going to be able to do the most for you and support you the most. So um, as much as like obviously respecting his privacy and everything like that, like this is something that you're also going through. So let your friends know because your friends are going to be able to be there for you when they understand the situation, like really explicitly. Um, And yeah, I I mean, like if I had any friend who had like been like was going through this, I'm like, I'd be like, no, hundred percent, like crash on my couch for mm-hmm. as long as you need. Mm-hmm. So I think, um, that I'm sure there are people in your life who totally will do that and just make sure that you're being really honest with them about the situation and also about what you need from them as friends to support you yeah. through all of it. Yeah. Cause yeah. it's rough. It's super rough, but and you're then gonna... how to make her place like more comfortable. <gasps> oh, I mean, I think, Number one, just like go like that. What's that? That that's is it a Swedish term? That's like higgy, higgy or whatever. High get high H Y G something. But it's supposed to be like just like cozy, cozy, mm-hmm. cozy, cozy sort of things. Um, I think focus. Le- I mean, a get a gravity blanket. Yeah, a gravity We're blanket obsessed. and Buffy. Too. Oh my god! Yeah, we both have those. Mm-hmm. They're probably advertising in this episode too, so you can get. Yeah, Melissa Somebody told me to get off. one before they were even sponsoring the show. Yeah. And I was like, I'm obsessed. Yeah. And then they sponsored and then mm-hmm. they're the best. <laughs> um, so I would yeah, focus on things that uh, that kind of comfort level mm-hmm. of like stuff that's good for you in that way. Mm-hmm. Um, things that smell good also make yeah. me like lavender calms me down mm-hmm. and things that are going to you walk in and you just see things that um, make you feel good. Yeah. And I think also pictures of like your friends and your family and stuff that's might not necessarily have like a a physical feeling of coziness and warmth but things so when you look around your room or artwork or paint anything that Mm -hmm. like when you look around it makes you happy and it makes you feel like safe and nice and good and secure um I'm like a hyper paranoid person so for me like I love being able to have like so many lights in rooms and like have them them be able to like really all the way turn on um I had a night light for like the longest time um and now one of our lights just like won't turn off in our kitchen so like that's my night light because (laughs) I can still see it all the way from our fucking bedroom um so I think stuff like that is is super great um and then also to feel safe and I I would as much as alone time feels really um can be really like therapeutic also inviting people over Mm -hmm. and having like it's your sanctuary and it's your safe space but also you can let people into your sanctuary and your safe space and like having making like weekly plans with friends and Mm -hmm. all that stuff because as someone who lived alone for a long time like it can get really lonely yeah and it can be really cathartic at some points but it can also just feel isolating so making sure that your um still going out of your comfort zone and like having, or like staying within your like comfort, like this is my cozy, comfortable place. And I'm going to bring people into it. If you don't feel like ready to like explore outside of that. And then I would also say, start um, a new hobby at like at Mm -hmm. your home. So like maybe you get into painting watercolors, you get into something that's like an activity. Once you come home, that isn't just like content that isn't just like watching tv or anything like that that you've got like a little corner on your desk where like you like to paint or you like like to like whether it's like make friendship bracelets knitting something that you can do that feels um like productive and relaxing Mm -hmm. that isn't um content because content can also be triggering yeah like there's definitely like there's so many fucking things i'm like halfway through i'm like yeah i can't watch this just make me feel fucking worse like i can't do this so something that can take your mind off of that too Mm -hmm. and music get speakers yeah speakers all around the apartment that'll Mm -hmm. be great also for me, like color is a big thing. So mm-hmm. like, um, like when I walk in, it's like purplish. Um, like my curtains are purple. My, I have a fuzzy purple rug. Um, and then like my bedroom, there's like lots of like gold tones in there so that when the sun shines in, mm-hmm. in the morning, then my whole room is like golden. Um, yeah. So yeah, that's another thing. To yeah. Think about. And curtains feeling safe. Yeah. Yep. That's another good one. I have blackout curtains which I love. But then the other thing I did with, I got blackout curtains. So, um, if I like want to feel like really isolated in a way I can, but then I also got curtains that go underneath it. So Mm -hmm. they're like sheerer so people can't see in, but if I still want the light without feeling like too exposed, I can have that. Um, so I think that's also a good one, you know, alarm system, the Alexa thing you're telling us. Oh yeah. Alexa has this new thing that's called like Alexa guard. 
So when you leave your house, you can say, Alexa, I'm leaving. And it'll make it so like if there's a fire or if glass breaks or anything weird happens in your house, then it'll send an alert to your phone. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah. then when you come home, you say, Alexa, I'm back. And she's like, welcome home, Melissa. <laughs> or whatever. <laughs> really what? Unless you change your name to Melissa. Yeah. yeah whatever funny. your name is. It's always just Melissa, though. <laughs> Alexa's like, I only do this for Melissa's. And I'm like, well, fine. Sure. <laughs> there can be more Melissa's. But um, congrats on your new apartment. Yeah. That's, I think a, it'll be that's great. a big step. Yeah. Congratulations. Yeah. It'll be good. And also just lots of uh, uh, last one I'll say speakers, podcast. I mean, uh, music is great, but also podcasts. Mm-hmm. That for me, when I'm. Um, home alone or even when I lived alone playing it made it feel like it I wasn't so isolated like there are people around yeah it's like that meme of everyone being like haha me laughing alone in my car to the people who don't know that I'm like they're yeah, I'm best friends with these people on podcasts so <laughs> it feels nice it includes some I also do that with like getting like a postmate I always have like a podcast playing or something that's not tv so I'm like oh I have all these people and like don't oh, kidnap God. me I mean, I'm paranoid. Okay. You know, that's how I say comfort, like my, my cozy well, comfort. I always tell my postmates just to leave the food at the door. So, yeah, I should do that. Yeah. Then I don't have to. I talk rarely to them do at it, all. though, because usually Aislinn understands my paranoia and she'll do it. And then my it's not, it too. it's just, I don't want to talk to people, as I've said before. <sighs> yeah. <laughs> I mean, it's valid. People yeah. suck. Yeah. People are the worst. Well, um, yeah. I'm excited for you and your new adventure. So let us know how it goes. Send us pictures um, on uh, Instagram of your cute apartment Mm -hmm. of the inside. We don't need to see the outside. We're good. Hi, Megan. So I just learned about some news with my oldest younger brother. Um, I'm 21 and he's 17, I believe. Um, We found out that he was my dad's kid about five or six years ago sorry here's some backstory um and he has his entire life gone through so much like he's been abused in every single way you could think of basically from his mom being a drug drug addict dating men who abuse him and all that type of stuff and his grandmother being a drug addict and He was primarily in her custody. Don't know how. Um, We tried helping him, gave him all the resources we could when he was like a preteen, when he lived with my dad, and it just didn't work. He kept stealing from my parents. He kept threatening all these things. He went to counseling, and he was diagnosed, I would say, as a clinical sociopath. Um, I don't know if that's important or not. But I just learned that after he moved back into his uncle's house and then moved back with his mom, which wasn't the best place for him at all, um, he had gone to juvie twice and is now being charged as, as an adult for raping a child. And even though him and I aren't close, I don't know how to feel about it. Obviously, like, it's disgusting and I can't believe that it happened, but... At the same time, that's my brother, so I don't I don't really know how to deal with it. Um, if you could obviously give me some advice, that would be great. I just I don't I don't know how to deal with it, and it's kind of freaking me out. So yeah, thank you. Bye. Oh fuck. Um, yeah. Damn. Well, I think the first thing I think it is. I mean. It sucks, but I think like it is important that he has been diagnosed as a clinical sociopath. Yeah, yeah. And I understand that like familially blood related, this is your brother. Um, and I think the more research you can possibly do on sociopaths, I think you might understand that the relationship and the kinship that you feel towards him as your brother, he doesn't feel towards you. And he if he is a clinical he doesn't have that sense of empathy and remorse and love and the the compassion that you're giving him he doesn't have not only does he not have for you he doesn't have for anybody yeah and it really sucks when someone in your life that you have those feelings for and you have that like innate human relationship with when that's not matched um, it's really confusing and it's really hard because 
you can't ever really put yourself in his place because he doesn't have that sense of empathy. And that is what makes humans human. Like that is, that is one of those things. And when he doesn't have that, it's hard to wrap your head around how someone could not have that Mm -hmm. because there's also a huge aspect of manipulation when it comes to sociopaths who um, can, if you can, you can tell, I know a lot about them. Um, but, um, a lot of it is mimicking and seeing like, oh, this is, I see how these humans are, how these people, I keep saying the human, like he's an alien, he's not an alien, but like, I see how people are reacting and communicate with each other on a TV show. And I'm going to mimic that mm-hmm. to get what I want and get what I need. So it can be really confusing and hard because, it doesn't really all line up as a story because there are moments where it feels like, no, this feels like compassion. This feels like humanity. And then he's stealing something. It's, it's not, it's never there out of like the goodness of their heart. It's there out of the fact that like, that's what's happening. And Mm -hmm. I also want to say like, there's as much as like sociopaths are depicted as like serial killers and so incredibly scary and all of that stuff. It's a mental disorder Mm -hmm. and it's not something that, Um, necessarily like makes him a monster or a terrible person. It is the reason why he has done these things. And it's the reason why these things have happened and it hasn't changed or gotten better. And it adds up to the fact that a huge thing with sociopaths and a huge uh, connection is people who were abused as children. Yeah. And And, like promiscuous sexual behavior and infidelity are parts of that. And abusing children is -hmm. is a part of that profile as a sociopath. It checks out from his whole life that Mm -hmm. like it fucking sucks that like there are a bunch of studies of people not knowing like are people born sociopaths, nature versus nurture and all of that stuff. And it totally fucking sucks that this is where he's ended up but this is where he's ended up. Yeah. And it's not something that you are going to be, able, you or anybody's going to be able to change. And I think like the more that you can look at it as he's a danger to himself and other people right now. Um, and that this is like a terrible, disgusting thing that, I mean, it's been terrible things that have been going on that you and your family have tried to, steer him in the right right direction it's not been able to work and now it's at a point where it's not just affecting your family and in a way that you guys can deal with while still being frustrated like this has gone to a whole different level and knowing the fact that if he's not able to be a like productive positive part of society right now then like he shouldn't be Mm -hmm. he should be charged as an adult and He shouldn't be able to be out and around. He should be a registered sex offender. There should be all of these things that like that doesn't change. Like he's still your brother, but he isn't capable and shouldn't be allowed to be in certain situations Mm -hmm. and the law should enforce that. Yeah. And I think the more that you learn about um, what a sociopath is and that then the more you'll be educated and you can understand him more. And I would also suggest therapy for yeah. you yeah. is great. Um, in your family too. Yeah. yeah. Just to understand it more. Cause I mean, I've definitely understood it a lot more in therapy. Um, and it's something that it just, it's one of those things that like the more research that you do on your own and the more that you can talk to professionals about it, I promise you for all of you, it will be these moments of, Oh, it clicks. Oh, it clicks. And it clicks not in like a year. It doesn't click in like a certain specific time period of his life. You're going, it's going to click in every aspect and you're going to be able to look back on it. And I'm not saying that it's going to tarnish your memories at all, or it's going to like do anything like that, but it's going to make this like sadness that you feel of wanting him to do better and thinking that he can and like feeling this obligation to be like, well, what about me? What have I done? All of these things. It's going to be like, you know what? This is him. Mm -hmm. This sucks that this is like, was his situation is some circumstance when he was really young and it was out of our hands. And this is where he's at now. But this empathy that I, or and this, these, these feelings that I have of like sadness about like, like of that, this is my brother and he's doing all these terrible things. It's going to change your relationship dynamic, you know, how you view your relationship in a way of being like, oh, I was never going to get what I wanted, like what I needed as a relationship out of this person. I was Mm. never going to get that. And I think when you have that, it kind of closes that chapter. Then it, 
I think the worst thing ever is like when there's a relationship you have with someone and like you can't get what you want out of it. Mm -hmm. And once you realize that like that was you're not going to be able to, I think you will feel a lot um come to terms with it a lot more and like you'll you'll feel a lot better and you'll feel a lot more empowered and controlled in your own life because there was nothing you could have done which is like yeah it's a frustrating thing but um yeah i think it's the more re- yeah i think knowledge is power and the more you can research it and understand it and then yeah i think if you can talk to a therapist about all of it um it makes sense i mean there's like the same interviews that happens with like people whose kids commit murders and shootings and all of that stuff like that it's a process of figuring all that stuff out and also I think if it feels productive for you to um really like uh like volunteer with like young kids Mm -hmm. and um doing like work with a charity that focuses on um helping like young abused kids in that Mm -hmm. situation like channel that like sadness that you have um and empathy you have for your brother to like people who are in his same shoes when he was that age, because I don't want to call him a lost cause, but I think like that empathy, um, I think there's a lot of kids out there who could really use that, Mm -hmm. like the nurture and love, um, that have parents that that are like drug abusers and stuff. So yeah, yeah, I think have probably abused them. Yeah. And I think that's those, those people are going to be, really susceptible like being they're going to be able to feel that and absorb that from you and I think you're going to find that to feel a much more like fulfilling Mm -hmm. place because I think pouring love into a sociopath does nothing Mm -hmm. um and it sucks and like it feels exhausting but you always kind of like hold out a little bit of hope but the the more than you can pour love into other people and people who maybe you see like young him in I think uh I think that's going to be a much more um a, a good relationship on both ends. It's not uh-huh. going to be so draining for you, but this really sucks. And I'm sorry. Yeah, I'm really sorry. Yeah. Oof. Hmm. I wish I could give you a hug. Yeah. Just like close your eyes and we're all pretend we're hugging right now. Your eyes closed. Okay. Okay. That was our hug. That was a good one. I hope I wasn't the only one closing my eyes. I closed my eyes. Okay. Well, you always close your eyes for no reason. <laughs> Randomly all the time. I think I'm a deep thinker. Oh yeah. She's an Aquarius. She's not from this planet. <laughs> That's why. Okay. Is this, do we have another one? Or are we on to a... Uh, don't blame them. We are on to don't blame them. Uh, and this is where listeners, you guys, call in with your own advice on um, previous calls. If you've mm-hmm. been through something similar. Mm-hmm. So this is from episode 24 from season two. Um, the original caller was very, very 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 concerned that she would get pregnant (gasps) okay yeah i love this one so this is someone calling in to share their advice if someone got fucking pregnant from dry humping i'm gonna lose it did she no oh thank god hey megan i am listening to the last podcast with melissa um and there's a girl that called because she's super paranoid about um getting pregnant even if she's not having sex and I cannot even tell you how much that used to be me I'm 22 and I've been with my boyfriend for almost five years now um he's the only guy I've had sex with but that used to be me to a T I made him take me to get plan B one time just because we made out and he came in his hand so I totally get it however it's sort of something I've just I've kind of grown out of so partially because I have an IUD and even with an IUD I did not let him come in me for the first year because I was still terrified. And then my doctor basically told me there's the slimmest chance of getting pregnant with an ID. Like there's no point, like just let it happen. So I've gotten comfortable with it now after a few minor major panic attacks. Um, So I totally get it. It's just something that you have to learn to trust your partner, trust yourself, trust your body and eventually you'll probably just get used to it or kind of grow out of it, I guess. Also with what Megan said about implantation bleeding, I said every time I started my period, I would say, it's not my period. Or, I'm not spotting. It's implantation bleeding. But I figured out by a lot of research that implantation, implantation bleeding is usually a very dark color. It's like brown usually, which sometimes your spotting can be, but sometimes that's helpful to know that your period is usually going to be a little bit more red than implantation bleeding. It's going to be a very dark brown usually. 
So that's something that helped me get through that. So good luck, girl. You're probably not going to get pregnant, especially if you're being as cautious as you are. But good luck. Everybody stay safe. And thanks. Love the show, guys. Bye. I I just want to applaud. I'm not here to like applaud a fish or something. And I'm really not here to applaud usually like straight boys. But like that boyfriend for buying plan B when he came in his pants and being like, yeah, babe. Oh, but I'll spend, I'll spend 45 50, fucking yeah. dollars on this for sure. Here you go. That's been, I think that's really sweet. That is sweet. They're still together too. Yeah. So. Five years. Going, five, that's going so, strong. Yeah. So original color. You're not alone. You're not. You're not. Yeah. I mean, it's just so unlikely, but I do like how casual she made her doctor sound. Like she made her, her doctor sound like she was peer pressuring her. It's like, yeah. fucking let him come inside you. <laughs> just let him nut. <laughs> like, just let him fucking nut. Like you're being stupid. <laughs> Not that she said that. Not that you're being stupid, but yeah. no, it's, it's, yeah. It's funny. Knowledge is power. It is. Once you figure this out, you're like, oh wow. Okay. Yeah. And then you can enjoy yourself more. Yeah. Oh yeah. And also like, don't take plan B if you really don't have to guys. Yeah. Don't do that at all. At all. All right. Well, guys, that's it for our episode. I hope you enjoyed. Me too. Um, if you guys uh, haven't checked out the Patreon, please, please, please check it out. Mm-hmm. There's new content from us. Mm-hmm. There's new content Monday, Wednesdays, and Fridays. So much content yeah. for all of you who want more. This is where you go. Mm-hmm. More is more. This is where you belong. Patreon. Um, and check out our Instagram. Don't belong meme pod. And uh, if you guys want to uh, call in for an upcoming episode, you can give us a call at 310-694-0976. You're going to need to do both hands. Yeah. She was trying to do it along with her hands. Um, and international listeners, send us an audio message at meganpodcast at gmail.com. You only did like four letters. I know. Um, I could get them all in, but you were I just going too do. fast. It's true. <laughs> um, and uh, what else, guys? Check our That's Instagrams it. out. We're yeah. always in the show notes. Mm-hmm. Um, and uh, we'll see you guys next time. Goodbye. Don't Blame Me is a production by me. Executive produced by Melissa DeMonts. Camera operator Amanda Lechner. And music by Ryan Hunter and Giacomo Picasso. Part of the HerPod Network.